Hello everyone, welcome to the session. So in this particular session, we will talk about an another important scenario, which is the best case scenario, that is omega notation that we have talked about in our previous video. So uh, I hope that everyone who is coming in this video already have watched the previous video where I talk about the three scenarios and we have discussed about big O notation in very much depth. Okay. Now in this video, let me talk about something called as omega notation. So whenever I'm saying omega notation, right, omega notation, this notation is basically serving the purpose of the best case scenario. The symbol to represent is this, right? Now, in this particular case, what it says is that, that any function which is f of n is omega of g of n only when, only when the value of f of n is somehow greater than equal to the value of c of g of n. If you remember, in the previous video, we have talked about big O notation. So I can say that this is just the, I would say, reverse of the big O notation that we have talked about, right? There, we have seen that the value is uh, less than equal to, here it is greater than equals to. So here the constant is greater than zero. Here the value of n naught is greater than equals to one. Again, right? And the value of n is greater than equals to the value of the n naught that we have. Now, this is the, I would say, the mathematical intuition behind the omega notation, which is dealing with the best case scenario. Let me try to give you a graphical picture for the same, and then we will try to take some examples to understand the concept. Now, Suppose here we are having some function, right? Here the value of n is there, which is increasing as we are moving towards the extreme x-axis. And here we are having the time, right? This The graph that we are plotting here is somehow, suppose this is a value which is of uh, c of g of n, okay? c of g of n. And this is a value or this is a curve which is somewhere f of n. Now here if you will see, I would say that this is the meeting point or this is the threshold I would say where after which there is no occurrence where the value of f of n is lesser than the value of c times g of n. After this threshold, if you will see or if you will observe at every point of time, f of n value is somehow greater, right? So this is the idea behind the best case scenario or the omega notation. What does that indicate? What is the meaning of that? Let me try to give you one example and then we will talk about the same. For example, here we are having f of n as equals to n and g of n is equals to 5n. Example number one. Here if you will observe, what I am saying is that f of n is equals to omega of g of n. When can we say this? When this particular statement will be true? This is my question. Now we know that the internal meaning of this is something where f of n is somehow greater than equals to c times g of n at some particular value of n where the value of n is something equals to uh, n naught, right? Now, in this particular case, if I will write n greater than equals to 5 of n, c times, right? Now, the question here for you all is that what should be the value of c I should impute here so that this condition will become true, so that this condition will become true. Obviously, you can say to me that if I will write the constant of c as 1 by 5, the condition will become true. So here, the value of n is greater than or equals to 1 by 5 times 5 of n. At that point of time, yes, they are equal. So that's 
where we can say that the statement that we have written which is f of n as omega of g of n will become true. Let's talk about another example. Example number 2. To illustrate or to get the same concepts again. Here if suppose I am saying that the value of f of n is somehow equals to n square and the value of g of n is somehow equals to n square plus n plus 10. Okay. Now when can we say that f of n is omega times g of n? When f of n is somehow greater than or equal to c times g of n, right? It means n square is somehow greater than or equals to n square plus n plus 10. Now, this is c times. What should be the value of c should I write here so that this condition will be satisfying? Now, if you will see, here if suppose I am writing the value of c as constant 1 by 2. At that point of time, always consider the higher uh, quadratic term or higher exponential term. Here if you will see we are talking about here we are having a power 2 and the power 1. So whichever is having a higher power that particular approximation you will take to compute the overall time complexity to compute the overall a uh, priori analysis. So here in this particular case when you take the value of c as 1 by 2 you yourself observe consider the value of n is very high. For example, I am considering that the value of n is equals to maybe uh, 100,000 means 1 lakh. At that point of time, uh, if you will observe, this value will be obviously higher when I, I will writing down the value of c as 1 by 2. So for higher values of n, this number will become higher and this is a constant only. So it means that again, this particular term will be true. Correct? Now let's move towards the example number 3 and that might be the last example to illustrate you the concept of omega notation. Uh, what can I do is that let me try to fetch some good example here. For example here I am having f of n as n and suppose g of n as maybe n square. Let's take this example. Now can I say that the value of f of n is omega times the value of g of n. Can I say this? I can say this only when the value of f of n is somehow greater than or equal to c times g of n. It means the value of n is somehow greater than equals to c times n square. What should be the value of c? I should put here so that this particular condition will be satisfying. So here if I will put the value of c as 1 by n, then you can say that if you will put the value of c as 1 by n, the value will become 1 by n into n square. It means at that point of time, this n will be cancelled out with each other. So we will be able to get the value as approximately equal. So with this value of c as 1 by n, can I say that yes, we can write this as f of n as omega of g of n. Can we say? What do you think? No. Why? Because this c is not a constant here. Because this c is somehow inversely proportional to the value of n that we have here. And that's something which is not correct. Because what we have understood in our definition uh, in the uh, 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 big O notation itself I have already talked about this co uh, constant term that this C is something which always remember is a constant. Right? It should not be dependent on any other variable. But here if you will see this is somehow is depending upon the value of n and that too I would say specifically it is inversely proportional to the value of the n. So in this particular case, we can say that the value of f of n is not omega of g of n for this particular example. Now, I hope that with the help of all these examples that we have discussed in our session, you guys will be able to get a clear cut idea 
right what is this omega notation meaning all about and how this is completely reversed i would say from the worst case scenario from the big o notation right so usually what happened is that that people are usually curious about the worst case analysis part because obviously when a code is running good in the be- in the worst case scenario then it will be definitely running the be- running in a good way or in a good sense in the be- best case and the average case scenario as well but still you should have a clear cut idea that whenever we are talking about big o whenever we are someone is talking about omega whenever someone is talking about theta what internally the meaning of that what is the internal meaning of these statements right so i hope that i am making sense to everyone if you still have any sort of doubt do let me know with this happy learning to all bye bye everyone see you soon in the next upcoming session where now we will talk about the last one which is the theta notation which is the average case scenario okay bye bye everyone see you soon